Hi, thank you. Thank you all for, for coming out today to talk about Indonesia U.S. relations and the rise of China. Um, I particularly want to thank uh, Rizal Romley for joining us. Uh, Salamat datang, very good to have you here. Um, Southeast Asian voices are so important to the debate here in Washington. And honestly, uh, we don't hear enough of them. We were just having a conversation about that a second ago. We don't hear enough of them in Washington. Um, Southeast Asia is usually discussed, I think it's fair to say, in absentia, uh, except for the fine representation of the many embassies here. Uh, and if you're being discussed in absentia here in Washington, that means you're being discussed by the China specialists. So the China specialists have a lot of a lot of ideas about what's going on in Southeast Asia and how it's disposed to great power competition and all the rest. And in my opinion, that very seriously skews the debate and our understanding of things. So it's good to have someone from, South, from Southeast Asia. It's good to have someone from Indonesia here, uh, especially given the centrality Indonesia has in ASEAN and its, and its centrality to regional geopolitics, something that I think maybe because of the skewed debate here in Washington, we don't think enough about. Um, it's particularly nice to have someone as distinguished as former economic coordinating minister and former maritime affairs minister, Rizal Romley here, uh, to lead off our discussion. Uh, by way of introduction, I just want to make a couple more references to his, to his bio. Uh, he also served as finance minister, and he served as head of Bulog, as well as being a president commissioner of Simon Gresik. Uh, the latter two things don't translate that well into American. So uh, just to let you know, Bulog is the state uh, logistics agency, which was once a very powerful organization in Indonesia, still still powerful, but once very powerful. And Semen Gresik is Indonesia's, now now Semen Indonesia, but is, is Indonesia's biggest cement producer and, and one of the largest in the world. So, um, so Pat Rizal had some very big jobs in, in Indonesia. He's currently chairman of a think tank that he that he founded called Econic Advisory Group. Um, he also has a PhD in economics from Boston University. So one of the, one in the fine traditions of Indonesians who have come to the United States for economic training. Uh, we need some of that back in the States now, I think. Uh, so we do some of our own home training in that regard. So with that, let me turn it over to uh, Pat Rizal and he'll get us started. He's gonna speak and then we'll take some questions and, and have a little bit of discussion. And then he's gotta go and so we'll bring up our panel to continue continue the conversation and commentary. Thank you. Thank you, Walter. Uh, I'm glad I was here. Uh, I'm also honored to be able to speak and have some discussion with you uh, this morning. Uh, I would like to talk about the geostrategic shift in Asia from an Indonesian perspective. Indonesia, one of the largest maritime country in the world. And we are constitutionally committed to promote peace and ensure the stability and neutrality of the Asian region. So we are committed to uh, proactive and uh, foreign policy. Does, it, does, the, does the corruption issue, uh, is it also a geopolitical issue in the sense that it gives a way in for foreign actors? Is there any evidence of, of uh, not necessarily with campaign financing, mm -hmm. but an irregular system can sometimes yes. accommodate foreign influence in foreign policy in other ways. Do you find that in evidence in, in Indonesia at all? If there are a lot of big projects in Indonesia, there are competition between China, Japan, and European or US. Most likely the US, European, and even Japan is going to lose in the tender process because China uh, cost is about 40%, 50% uh, cheaper. Uh, so the problem of real competition, uh, China are able to do a much competitive price setting because, uh, uh, because the currency is usually uh, undervalued and other factor. But uh, 
some country have a standard of ethics that doesn't condone bribery to official. Some other country are willing to play the money games. And by doing so, they don't have to fight a war, essentially. It's just by the elite. Yeah. Uh, they don't have to posture for a big hardware, uh, but just entertain and uh, facilitate the interests of the elite. Uh, by doing so, you can buy policy. By doing so, you can uh, tilt it the direction of uh, you foreign policy. And I think this is not good. We should set a standard of governance that are important because then we don't have a case like in Malaysia. There are a lot of uh, large projects. Some of them are not necessarily needed, but you are lobby uh, to get the project and the financing that the real economic benefit is yet not a priority or small. Luckily, Mahathir and Anwar just got re-elected. They follow some of renegotiated some of this uh, highly uh, overpriced and finance project. And I think if there are political change in Indonesia uh, in 2019, similar thing can also be done.